Money, energy, time, and effort, non-recoverable. It's a machine, it's a, it's a piece of metal. Links down in the description. So let me show you how you find links or description part that, let me show you. I'm gonna show you some of the items that I have, uh, the, the OEM bags. See, the truth is I don't even know what I'm, why I'm doing this video. Uh, I pretty much have my mind set up uh, and set already. I know what I'm doing. But I thought it would be a good idea, and you know, a few people around me were telling me, "Hey, why don't you, why don't you ask your uh, subscribers, your viewers, what they think about it?" So I said, "You know what? Let me write a few topics, and then I'll ask you guys." Right. Thought it would be a good idea to ask you uh, what you think. Ever, ever since the launch of the Lowrider ST, I just fell in love with the looks. I think it's. It's gonna be an awesome, awesome bike. A great addition to the channel. And I just fell in love with it. I said to myself, that's it, I'm ordering. The next day, I went ahead and called my guy Dave in Bergen, uh, in Bergen Harley Davidson. My notes just flew, up, flew away. I called my guy uh, Dave in Bergen, Bergen Harley Davidson and just put an order in. I said, I want one of those. Then I started to, th you know, the, the tough questions started to pop up. Do I buy it as a, a second bike or a third bike? Do I replace what I currently have? Up till now, up till a week or two ago, I, th I thought, yeah, I'm gonna buy it as another as another bike. I'll have Blackbird and I'll also have uh, the new uh, Lowrider ST. But then I started, uh, you know, going through, you know, second thoughts. Can I afford it? Will I have enough time to ride both? Obviously, it's gonna be a great addition to the channel because it's a new, hyped up model, a new and exciting uh, direction that Harley Davidson are going, going with. It will absolutely uh, push my channel, push my viewers. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna be exciting and cool, cool, cool content. But do I give up the electric glide standard that I have over here, Blackbird, that I've been uh, building for the last two years? So let me uh, walk through some of the uh, you know, reasons why I should uh, trade it in and some of the reasons why I should actually keep the electric glide and add it. So I just made a little, I compiled a little list over here because uh, obviously I won't be able to remember. Uh, let me go through the reasons that I should actually uh, keep the bike. Okay, first of all, this bike is my first Harley. It's my first Harley ever. There's a lot of, uh, you know, emotions in it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's your first thing. It's something special when it's, uh, when it's your first, first of. So that's one reason why I should, uh, I should keep the bike. Second reason is I pretty much built this bike from a clean canvas. The electric glide standard, as you know, comes like bare bones. And I built it up to be my own bike. All, I, I don't think there's a part over here that wasn't touched. And it's now my bike. It's, it's built up the way I want it. So that's a, that's a reason why I should keep it. Another reason why I should keep it is all the money, time, and energy spent on this bike, building it, uh, riding it. That is something that is not recoverable. I will never get my money back on the things I install, never get my time back, never get my energy back. So it's lost, lost time, lost energy, lost money. Another reason why I should keep the bike is this connection that uh, you guys and me have to this bike now. I don't want to say uh, like an emotional thing, but uh, you know, with the last two years has been uh, with this bike has been with me the whole time. With you guys, there is some kind of a little connection over there. It's another reason. Another big reason is uh, the Electric Glide is considered a full size a full size bagger. The Lowrider ST might be not uh, perceived by many people uh, as a full size bagger. It's not full size. It's it's lighter. Some of you may not uh, appreciate the fact that it's, uh, that it's not a real, real bagger. Now, let me answer some of the, you know, the, the reasons I said to keep the bike. My first Harley, well, okay, my first Harley. I still don't own my first car that I had 20 years ago. So I don't, that's not a big, a, not a big enough factor for me. I built it to be my own, true, true. This is the bike uh, that I wanted, the bike that I, uh, that I built exactly for my needs and uh, 
yeah, that, there's a good point over there. Money, energy, time, and effort, non-recoverable. Well, remember that this this whole, you know, all the time and money and energy I put into the bike was also for, for the purpose of, of creating this channel, creating this content, creating this, this YouTube journey that I'm going through. So I don't see it as wasted time, wasted energy, wasted money. I see it all part of the process of building the community, building this channel, bu building this YouTube journey of mine. Growing the channel with you guys, it's it's I don't I don't think it's not recoverable. I think that every time energy and money put into the bike helped build this whole you know this whole uh, YouTube uh, thing that's going on. So definitely, I see this every dime, cent, and sweat and tears that went into this bike as well worth it and and uh, gained a lot a lot from it. Now about being attached emotionally to Blackbird, well, I I hope I'm not offending anybody, but to me it's it's a machine. It's a, it's a piece of metal. It's got no emotions. It's got no feelings. It's got no you know what I mean. To me, it's a it's a fun tool. It's a fun thing. I I, I don't have any like emotional connection to the bike. Of course, obviously, I enjoy the bike. I enjoy whatever whatever came out of it but it's not that there's like some kind of an emotional emotional bond it's gonna always be in my videos it's it's good memories it's lots of fun but there's no like emotional connection with with the piece of metal sorry about viewers being upset that they don't have a real full-size bagger well the truth is I'm not concerned I think that most of you guys like to watch this video because of the content because of personality who I am what I do how I talk and not just because I have an electric glide standard and it's a full-size bagger am I wrong guys I, I don't think I'm wrong now let me go through some uh, reasons why I should actually trade in the bike for the lowrider ST first and most important look at my garage my garage is, is, is way too small for so many bikes I currently have the electric glide I have the Himalayan and I have the Sportster which is going but I still, I don't have room for two full-size uh, baggers in that garage. So that's one important reason. Second reason, obviously financially. Can I, can I afford another payment on a full-size uh, bagger? Uh, you know, as I've mentioned in the past, I always like to, to live within my means. And, sorry, I had to stop the videos. One of my neighbors was uh, photobombing with his full blast with his stereo in the car. Anyway, what I was saying, uh, can I afford it financially? Is it justified to keep two full-size baggers? I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure it's, this is the case. Like I told you, I like to live within my means and financially, I don't think it's a smart, uh, smart move uh, for me to, to have two full-size baggers uh, with a large payment on it. So I can't really afford it. So that's one of the big reasons. Another big reason why I wanna uh, trade it in, I still have significant upgrades that I need to do to the bike to get it to where I want to suspension suspension is still stock and the current suspension sucks really really sucks I need to finish up to do the tune uh, professionally done at uh, JD cycles and I'd like to get new handlebars narrower handlebars and that's obviously another another expense that I think I want to avoid at this stage so at this stage, I think I'm leaning into just uh, trading it in and creating great content on the Lowrider ST. What do you guys think? Let me know down by the comments. Obviously, the best thing, and if I had all the time, effort, money, and resources to keep both a big garage, everything, I would, I would keep uh, both bikes. But that's not the case. Anyway, guys, hope you'll appreciate uh, this little discussion that we had. And let me know down by the comments what you think. You see, this little conversation we just had, uh, getting you involved with what's going on in the channel, with what's going in with, with the bikes around me, this is the connection I'd like to, to create uh, a little bit stronger, to, to encourage. For that reason, I've actually just started a Patreon uh, page. Check it out. I'm going to put a link down by the description. Anyway, there are different tiers of involvement, different tiers of contribution to the, to the community trying to create a little uh, something a smaller community of us having having some conversation having uh, a chat 
between us so I can get some information from you guys to let you have some early access to footage that I have, early access to videos I have, all kinds of announcements, special raffles for patrons, uh, patrons only. So check it out. Go ahead and do check it out. Oh, by the way, guys, the raffle for the Sportster is going very well. I do encourage you to go in and check out, uh, grab some raffle tickets. We have two, month, two months left. This is the beautiful Sportster 883, Iron 883. Go ahead into www.holyshift.us and grab some raffle tickets. Or actually just buy any, any, uh, any item you buy at the, the website. It gives you automatically entries to the raffle. That being said, guys, I still have a lot, a lot, a lot of leftovers, things from the installs. I'm going to go, I'm going to show you some of the items that I have, uh, the, the OEM bags, the side covers, a few more items that I'm going to be listing on my website. Go ahead and take a look at them. Not stretched, what do you call them? Shortened or stock or standard. And they have the Advan Black saddlebag liners inside, brand new as you've seen. Normal wear and tear, I don't see any big or any scuffs at all. These are the side covers. Clean them up, look uh, decent, look pretty good. The only thing I can find is a minor, minor, minor scuff here, very, not really even visible. Obviously the stock fender, it's not stock anymore, as you see metal fen fender with the uh, LED conversion blacked out rear end like I did LEDs curved license plate holder so all these upgrades are part of the fender take that into consideration when you look at uh, the pricing for this item no scratches or dings or any blemishes on the visible visible parts of the fender there are like underneath where you can't really see where it's under the the frame and obviously, guys, how can I have a video without starting up the bikes? So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what you think about uh, trading in or keeping the Blackbird 2020 Electric Glide standard. Let me know down by the comments. You can also find links down by the description for my new Patreon page. I'm Sandy watching Holy Shift guys. Till the next video, peace out. You can also find links down by the description. Links down by the description. Links down by the description. Down by the description. This is kind of out of topic, but I, more than once I came across questions from people that I was like, what? How do you not know that? A lot of people are asking about things that I say specifically that are down by the description. So let me show you how you find links or, you know, the whole this description part that everybody always refers to. Let me show you. So this is how you find the description area on a PC, on a computer, on a Mac, in this case on a MacBook. As you can see, we're watching a great video by uh, some creator, I'm not sure who it is. And then underneath the video itself, while it's playing, you can see there's a description. It only lets you put in like a one paragraph and just below it, it says show more, click on that. And then you see the full description, usually with links, and more information of the video. That's uh, the links down by the description. These are the links. This is the, the whole description area. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how you find the description area 
on a tablet, uh, in this case, it's an iPad. As you see, their video is running. Any video, just going to skip the ad or whatever. Oh, nice. Who's, uh, wonder whose channel that is. Anyway, the description area is right underneath the video itself. You see this little uh, arrow pointing down? You click that. Once you click that, usually it opens up over here. If it doesn't open over here, it opens up over here. And this is the description area. This is all the information that is written under each video. And these are usually the links. Uh, when I say links down by the description, this is what I mean. So it's either underneath the video itself using this tab, this little triangle, okay? This little arrow. And it opens up on the side over here or on the bottom. And one last option, let me show you how uh, you switch over to description uh, if when you're watching it on the phone. Let's say you're watching it horizontally. This Let's put it, you're watching it this way. You switch it over to this orientation. Again, look for that little triangle. This triangle is right here, right here in this corner, this little arrow. So once you click this little arrow right here, now you got the description. You see description, the whole information. You see more. You can lick that, you get all the links, anything you need. That's it, guys. Hope you uh, learned something.